following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Today we are going to continue uh, talking about the centers, about the five centers, or better said, to the seven centers, since uh, beyond the five centers, we have uh, uh, two superior centers, which are the emotional superior center and the intellectual center, superior center. So the title of this uh, lecture today is The Development of the Inner Human. <coughs> we said uh, <coughs> the development of the inner human because uh, if we compare the physical body of any individual of this uh, planet Earth, if we compare it with the human physical body of uh, a true human being, and then we will see that uh, there is no difference. The physical body of uh, any individual in this planet Earth and uh, the physical body of a true human being are exactly the same, same features, same form. But the difference is inside, within. That's why the title is The Development of the Inner Human. Because the true human being is within. And this is something that we had to understand and comprehend because uh, conventional science in this day and age and even religion have the idea that the human being is just the physical body and that uh, when the, in the Hebraic Genesis is written that the human being was made into the image of God, people immediately associate that with a physical feature, with a physical image that we have. And they even think that God is a, has a physical form there in heaven and that uh, our physical features are made under the image of that huge uh, physical entity, which of course is absurd because uh, we have to comprehend and to understand that God has no form, but it, it, takes, it can take any form. And the uh, image of God 
of course, is the inner human that we had to develop. God has no form. That that we call God is an intelligence. Listen carefully. Intelligence, which is diluted in the universe. That's why in the previous lecture we stated that any atom is a trio of matter, energy, and consciousness or intelligence. So that intelligence of God abides in the universe. So we will say that everything is within that intelligence. Everything. But that intelligence is not within everything. And this is precisely the work that we had to perform to awake that intelligence in us. And this is, this is the work that we are doing to be aware of what we have within. In the previous lecture, we have stated that we abuse of our five centers. And if there is abuse, it is because there is not intelligence acting there. I cannot admit that an intelligence is there acting correctly, perfectly, and using the centers in their own way. So we stated, for instance, that there are individuals that use the intellectual center a lot, and that they are called bookworms. Obviously, the intellectual center has its own values, vital values, or its own bovicaldinus, also it's called bovicaldinus. But when we expand the energy of the intellectual center and we continue using it, then the intellectual center takes the sexual energy, which is the most potent energy that the organism creates or develops. When the energy of the sexual center enters into the intellectual center, and then it damages. Because the intellectual center is not made uh, for that type of energy. And then, of course, when the tissues or the mental body are damaged, then you find different type of sicknesses, mental sicknesses. And we have the other case, the emotional center, which is also abused by, uh, in this day and age, by the actors and actresses, the so-called artists. When you expand the energy of the emotional center and you continue using it, and then the emotional center takes or steals the sexual energy from the sexual center and start using it. When that energy uses the emotional center, and then there's the creation there of different type of taras, traumas, sicknesses that psychology is studying. So every center, of course, originates when it is abused, different type of sicknesses, or we could say psychosomatic problems in the individual. Let's see, for instance, the motor center. The motor center is also being abused by the sports, by people that like sports, like football players, soccer players, basketball players, whatever. They expand the energy of the motor center 
and then they abuse it. Because the motor center then starts stealing energy from the sexual center. And when you use the sexual energy in the motor center, then there is abuse. And there's other type of sicknesses that appear in different times among the people that abuse of this motor center. We have the instinctual center as well that is being abused, for instance, in the case of the boxers or martial arts, when it's being used extremely, steals energy from the sexual center. The instinctual center, of course, creates different uh, problems, psychosomatic sicknesses that uh, are known and studied in this day and age in different ways. So in reality, the human being that should be, that should abide within the physical body does not exist. Because it's written that it is made into the image of God. And God is perfect. Uh, this is written in the Gospels that Jesus states, strive to be perfect as your Father, who is in heaven, is perfect. Of course, intelligence or intelligent. But when we are abusing of the centers, obviously, we are in this equilibrium. And that's why the path of Gnosticism is the path of the equilibrated man. The person, the individual that uses his centers in the right way in order to develop the human being into the image of God. When you see this then, obviously, if the intellectual center, motor center, emotional center, instinctual center are abused unconsciously or consciously, when we come and we want to use the sexual center, the sexual center no longer has its energy. And then the sexual center steals energy from the other centers. And that's why we become a mess. Psychologically speaking, there are some types of people that uh, are uh, impotent because they abuse of the other centers. And when they want to perform the sexual act, they have no energy. And then they have to, to uh, act or to think or to feel different things in order to, for, for, for the sexual center to act. When they do that, obviously, the sexual center is uh, still in forces, energies from other centers in order to act. The result, of course, is different sexual problems that are very known in this day and age. It is precisely uh, uh, the big problem of this humanity because what we call salvation or the transformation or the creation of the human being the base of that is in the sexual center. Here you find why the different religions that were created by different avatars always emphasize the sexual problem and how to take advantage of the sexual energy. Actually, the beginning of the whole problem or the psychological problem that this humanity have is a sexual problem. Because we do not know how to handle the sexual energy. And we know through these Gnostic studies that in order to acquire that transformation or the development of the inner human being, 
we had to take care of our sexual force. But when we talk about the sexual force, the sexual energy, we had to understand and comprehend that we are talking about the sexual energy as it is, not mixed with other energies. Because as the sperm can create a physical body, also, if we know the procedure, the mixture of the sperm with the ovum can create other bodies inside of us, if we know the procedure. And that is what in Gnosticism is called the hydrogen, sexual hydrogen, T12, related with the seven uh, musical notes, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, To, La, Ti. So T, of course, is a synthesis in which the solar force is deposited in the sexual center. Because we need help. Remember that in this day and age, a lot of people talk that in order to be saved, we need help. We need a savior. And this is precisely the point here, to talk about that Savior. But we are not going to fall into the mistake of those uh, people that follow the antinomianism, which is a theology, a doctrine of belief that the Gospels frees Christians from required obedience, not requiring obedience of any law, whether it's scriptural or civil or moral, and that salvation is attained solely through belief and the gift of divine grace. So this antinomianism is a belief that is based upon a recognition of the mercy of God as the ground of salvation but it makes the fa fat fatal mistake that men can freely partake in sin because the law of God is no longer binding. So in other words, like the conventional Christianity in this day and age that believe that only by reading the Gospels or by believing in Jesus, you are saved. In other words, saved of what? Of the math that we have inside because we are creating and if we uh, observe ourselves psychologically we find that our five centers are of course not in equilibrium and it's not because the five centers are not developed the five centers are fully developed but psychologically we are using it in the wrong way and obviously we are creating a lot of problems sufferings pain within that that we call karma because karma is just the effect of our own use of the five centers. And it's a psyche, the one that is using them. So what we call sin is just a wrong judgment. The so God is right judgment, a right way of behaving, thinking, feeling, acting within the body. Remember that it's written that the physical body is a temple of God. So we need assistance. But here uh, abides precisely the problem that people used to think that just by believing in something they will receive that help. And they mistake and think that Jesus of Nazareth that came 2,000 years ago is a savior and that by believing in him is enough and they are saved they become equilibrated so we see of course all of the believers of different religions in Christianity and we don't find any equilibrium in them they are completely disequilibrated psychologically speaking Meanwhile, they think that they are saved. 
So that is, of course, based on ignorance. Because faith without works is worthless. So we have to understand and to comprehend that we have two superior centers. And through these two superior centers is how our monad, our spirit, our Father who is in heaven, our own particular intelligence, God, the being, acts through us. And that's why in Gnosticism, we have to work. We have to start developing those, these two centers. But in order to develop these two superior centers, we had to act with consciousness, with intelligence. It's not possible to act like mechanically. So you find, for instance, the superior emotional center that is directly related with the atom nous that we talk many times in different lectures. That the atom nous is the atom that is in the left ventricle of the heart. But when I talk about atoms, we have to understand that we are not talking about physical atoms. But spiritual atoms. Atoms related with the monad. Because we have to comprehend and to understand that in order for our monad, our being, our God, our angel, or whatever name you want to give it, to your inner father in heaven, in order for him to develop a creature into his own image, which in this case is ourselves. He needs assistance. He needs a way to do it, a connection. As when you are working for, with a computer and you want to make the computer to work in certain ways, you have to connect this wire with this other wire and to do this, to do that, to be a technician, to be a wizard. Obviously the monad, knows how to do it and the connections are within our bodies that is what we call atoms particles of the monad within the body atoms in the sense of small so of course there are different atoms you know very well that we have the atom of the Holy Spirit in the pineal gland. The atom of the sun, the second force, which is wisdom, in the pituitary gland. And uh, the exponent of the pituitary gland is in the left ventricle of the heart, which is the atom nous. The atom of the father resides in, the, in between the eyebrows and the root of the nose. But of course, in all our organism are different type of atoms, intelligences, which are connected to these uh, three primary forces, atoms of our monad in heaven, that uh, perform the work that we have to perform and that guide us internally. Now, the atom nous in the left ventricle of the heart is uh, that atom that is also called the son of man is that atom that controls the development of the consciousness through the blood in our physical organism So when we want internal assistance for our own particular monad, obviously we receive that through the heart, through the atom nous. This is what the people call hunches. I have the hunch of this, I have the hunch of that. It's the inner monad telling, guiding its own soul in order to walk the path or to do what is right. That's why we insist always <coughs> that we have to remember ourselves. 
And that remembrance of ourselves is related also with the pineal gland. Because we have the intellectual superior center, which is related with the pineal gland. But for, uh, in order to be in contact with the superior center, intellectual superior center, we have to remember ourselves. We have to be here and now. We have to use willpower. Because those centers, the emotional and intellectual superior centers, are connected with the monad. And the ego doesn't work there. But it's through those centers that the monad exercises pressure in our psyche in order for us to do what we have to do. And what we have to do is to be equilibrated. We have to balance the five centers because the consciousness, the soul, the psyche is on balance in the five centers. So to equilibrate that is what is called salvation. Because hell, inferno, averno, is the outcome of all the mess that we have within. We vibrate with the inferior dimensions because our five centers are unbalanced. But if we balance them, and then our five centers, the psyche within the five centers, are going to show an equilibrated man. It does a work that only nous can perform. But this nous, which is in the left ventricle of the heart, is connected, of course. As you see, is in the heart. And the heart is in relation with the sun, with the solar light. That's why it is written that the fires of the heart, which are guided by nous, control the sexual energy. And that is why in the Gospels you find that when Passover is coming, before that drama that Jesus is going to perform, which is the drama of the cross, because you know that the drama of Jesus of Nazareth is related with the cross to carry the cross. And the cross is a symbol of a sexual act in which the chrism, you know what is the chrism, right? Because from that word chrism comes the word anointment or Christ. Chrism is anointment and when we said Christ we are calling the anointed one. Right. The one that is anointed. But in which verses or chapters of the new gospel you find that anointment in different places. But the real way in which he's showing it very clear is before the Passover. It is written that a woman which is a prostitute in the book of uh, Mark says that, and other books doesn't say that it's not, that always they say that that woman is Mary Magdalene. Of course, this is a symbol that we have to understand here. Because it's written in Mark chapter 14, this, after two days was the feast of Passover and of unleavened bread. And the chief priests and the scribes saw how they might take him by craft and put him to death. But they said, not on the feast day, let us there be an uproar of the people. Uproar of people. And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured, in, poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? 
for it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, Let her alone. What troubled ye her? She hath brought a good work on me, you see. For ye have the poor with you always, and whosoever ye will ye may do them good. But me ye have not always. She had done that, or she had done what she could. She is come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I said unto you, Whosoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also shall she have done, that also has been shall done, shall be spoken of a memorial of her. And then after that says, And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto his chief priests to betray him. Do you hear here Judas the traitor and the woman that in many stories they say that is Mary Magdalene? It doesn't say that is Mary Magdalene there, but the, the story or this, uh, these verses are written in the four Gospels about the anointment before the trial or before the take, taking his cross, etc. In Bethany. Bethany means the house of the dates. I mean, those fruits that are related with a fig tree. You can make dates for, I mean, also from the palm tree, but in this case, it's a dry fruit related with a fig tree. And the fig tree is always related with a sexual feminine energy. So when Jesus says, or when it's written there that it's in Bethany, we have to understand and comprehend that it's related to the sexual force. Because in other cases also they say that Bethany is a house of perdition. But of course, the atom nous, which is related with the left ventricle of the heart, is the one that has to assist us in the house of Bethany. When Simon the leper lives. Who is this Simon the leper? Is everybody. Because we have this leprosy inside. We need to be clean of this leprosy. Psychosomatic leprosy that even sometimes is showing in the physical body. But the point here is that is a woman, the one that is anointing Jesus with a spikenard oil. Spikenard oil is a perfume that belongs to the sixth dimension. It's a perfume that belongs to Tifereth. Tifereth in the tree of life is a human soul. It's beauty. The sixth dimension. Because the one that is anointed is a human soul. And of course, Tiferet is in relation with the heart. As you see here, Tiferet is related with the heart. And in the heart, we have the left, the left ventricle, the atom nous. So in order for that atom nous to be anointed, to receive the chrism, the anointment, has to go to Bethany and to find a woman. Here is the mystery, precisely what you see, the mystery of salvation, the mystery of the drama of the crucifixion. Because that anointment is always related with a sexual force. And that's why it's a woman. It's not a man that is anointing Jesus there. It's a woman. And of course, everybody is saying, oh, he should know that, he, that she is a bad woman. That she is a prostitute. That she is a sinner. 
Well, any woman is a sinner, as any man is a sinner. And the symbol is this, that he has to do that and to receive that anointment in order to transform himself and to receive the chrism, the anointment, in other words. So that means that we have to imitate or we have to follow that path. If we want to be guided or to receive the fires in the heart, we have to go down into Bethany. And that Bethany is precisely the sexual center. That we find the house of the dates. Now, let us put the symbolism. The fig tree, I said, is uh, the symbol of the feminine sexual force. That feminine sexual force is related with woman. And is related with our force of procreation. Because when we take the symbolism of Adam and Eve, we find that Adam is the brain. And Eve is related with the sexual organs, whether in the man or in the woman. That's why Adam always is controlling the sexual force. But if a sexual force controls Adam, that's a problem. And that's why it is written that the problem into the psyche of humanity enters through Eve, but means the sexual organs of procreation. But in order to be saved, you need to go to Bethany and to transform that Eve, to take the seven sins of Mary Magdalene in this way, the symbol. The seven sins that Mary Magdalene had are the seven capital sins that each one of us has and that are rooted in the sexual center. But for that you need to transmute the sexual force. You need to be anointed with the chrism and that's the sexual force in the sexual center. If you don't do that, then your body cannot be killed or your psyche cannot be killed do you realize that that he says she is preparing my body for the burial because that's precisely the way when you start being a single you have to go to bethany in order to transmute the force as a single person but the great work is when men and women are united in the sexual act and transforming that sexual force in order to go up with the cross through the Golgotha, which is the brain, and to do the whole transformation in the psyche. Because that's internal. And that's why it is written that <clears throat> the Lamb of God is the one that erases the sins of the world. What world? Our own particular individual world. That Lamb is a ram, and ram is a symbol of Arius. And Arius is the fire. It's not a person. Jesus came and taught that with his life to show how to do it. But it's written in symbols, Kabbalistically, alchemistically. And if we don't see it, of course, we don't follow it. It's not a matter of believing. It's a matter of doing it. And that's why you see that in other gospel. The woman is anointing the feet of Jesus because the feet are the symbol of Malkut, the kingdom, and is precisely in the physical body when we have to start the work with the woman or with our sexual force. You, you, realize, you realize that? When you said Mary, you had to understand that that Mary is precisely that energy of the Holy Spirit which is feminine in the sexual organs, but is masculine in the pineal gland. You see that relation? The Holy Spirit, in this case, the white dove, is there in the pineal gland, but Mary is in the sexual organs. Mary is the sea. That's why mare in Latin, which is the sea, the force, the waters. So the force of that Mary has to rise in the spinal column that is what is called Kundalini. 
in the in the east. So when you start working with your divine force, Kundalini, with your Mary, is when you start working with your sexual force in Bethany. If you open a fig fruit, you see the similitude of that fruit with the ovaries of the woman. But also we can make the same uh, symbol with the testicles of, of, of the male. Those are the fruits of the sexual force of procreation in the man and in the woman that had to be united in Bethany, in that house, in the sexual center, in order for the leper to be, he to be healed, to have that transformation. And that's precisely is written there that after that anointment, that that woman is performing in Nus, in the Atom Nus, the whole drama starts. You see, it's so easy to see it when you have eyes to see and when you know the doctrine. The Atom Nus needs the woman. That's why it's written that in order for that great master, Jesus of Nazareth, to come into the earth, he needed Mary. Without Mary, the mother, Jesus wouldn't be here. He wouldn't give any lecture, any, any doctrine. So through Mary, Jesus came into the world. The Savior, in other words. So through Mary, which is a sexual energy, is how Jesus enters into our own particular world. But we have to be equilibrated. We have to have a life of equilibrium. Because if we are making a mess of our five centers, how are we going to take advantage of the sexual center? Because this is how everything starts. We, we have to receive the chrism, which is Christ, the solar force. And that's why it's written that the fires of noose controls the sexual force. The fires of news are not going to transmute a sexual force which is polluted. News is the atom that knows very well what to do. It's the intelligence. And that's why it's written that this intelligence controls other atomic intelligences. Because the transformation or the creation of the intellectual animal into a human being is an atomic transformation. It has to come from the atoms. It's a transformation of forces, intelligences. Lunar and solar atoms in our sexual energy, controlled by the atom nous. But then, Judas, Iscariot, go after that and betray the Lord. Well, you know that Judas Iscariot is a representation of the ego that everyone has inside, or the wrong transformation of the sexual energy. That's why it's written that Judas Iscariot abides in the sexual center as well. The twelve apostles, of course, are related with different glands in the human organism. And when we talk about Judas, Judas is the one that holds the money, the solar values in the sexual center. That's why Judas is always there. And the atom news needs Judas. Or the lion of Judah in the sexual center. And he's present there when the atom news is getting anointed by Mary, by that sinner. Because he's starting to transform desire into willpower. So do you realize that? Do you understand that? How precisely the Gospels are teaching you how to be saved. But there is a process of alchemy. 
an intelligent and conscious process. And that's why it is necessary to develop the emotional superior center, which is related with the atom nous. And that's why the master Samael advises always in different uh, lectures, different books, that we have to put in activity the chakra of the heart with different mantras. Because it's through the chakra of the heart how the solar logos, the cosmic Christ, help us in order to develop and to create our own individual, particular Jesus Christ. The emotional center works perfectly when one creates an astral body. The astral body is a luxury that only few have. People think in this day and age that everybody is being born with an astral body. But what we have instead of the astral body is what in theosophy is called Kama Rupa, the vehicle of desires, which are related, of course, with the inferior emotional center. And that's precisely that molecular, lunar, mechanical vehicle that anybody has is the one that humanity uses in order to go into the astral plane. The astral plane, which is Hod, the forces where we find the energy of the solar logos. So, with the creation, the development of the astral body, and then we unite our psyche to the Father. That's why it's written that no one can go to its inner monad, but through me, he says, it says the Christ. But he's talking about the atom nous. The atom nous is that intelligence that needs to create an astral body. And in, in order to create the astral body, we need to handle the sexual energy. Because it's the hydrogen, T12, which is precisely in the sexual center, the one that develops that astral, emotional body. But of course, during the process of development and creation of the astral body, we leave the drama that we are talking here. If we are a man, we need a woman. If we are a woman, we need a man. Because the sexual center, in order to create, needs the two polarities. And to know how to transmute that, to be anointed. So the anointment is related with the sexual center. Here you, you, you find that it is necessary to save energies. And not to abuse of any of the centers. If we want to create that internal savior. Or if we want that Christ to be developing us, which is light. And then the human being enters to develop. That's why when we talk about the sexual center, we have to talk about the first magnetic center related with the development or the creation of the inner human, which is the chakra muladhara, which is the foundation where that feminine aspect of the Holy Spirit abides. That feminine aspect of the Holy Spirit, which is called in Christianity Mary, Isis in Egypt, and has different names, receives the name of Kundalini in the Sanskrit. But in the book of Revelation, which is a book that is a guide for those that want to enter into the development 
of that inner human being starts with the church of Ephesus. And the church of Ephesus is precisely that magnetic center that is between the anus and the genitals. In that center, precisely, we have that energy that when develops, we start being anointed. We rece start receiving the chrism, which is precisely related with the sexual waters. And in the beginning of that uh, church of Ephesus, we find that it was written to an angel. So you said, what, what angel? People think that the angel of the church of Ephesus was, of course, an angel there in Asia. But they don't know that an angel is a messenger. It's an atomic intelligence that the atom news has to control. Because we repeat again, the development of that fire in the sexual organs is only possible if the atom nous allows it. Because the atom nous, the son of man, in the left ventricle of the heart, controls the fires. And that's why that atom nous is in contact with the intelligence or the atomic intelligence, which is that angel that talks uh, the book of Revelation in the church of Ephesus that control that development, that awakening that says unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write this thing said he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand the seven stars are the seven chakras that we had to develop who walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. The candlesticks or candelabra are related with the seven bodies of the true human being and which is directly related with the spinal column. So we had to develop that but the beginning of that is of course the church of Ephesus. It says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience. Because in order to awake that, that chakra, in order to start the work with a sexual center, we need a lot of patience, a lot of labor. We need pranayama. We need to start teaching the physical body how to develop that chastity, which is not easy. Because unfortunately, in that uh, uh, area, we find Judas which is accustomed to fornication, to adultery, not only in this life, but many lives. And to transform Judas, of course, at the end, Judas has to, to kill himself. And this is precisely the psychological work that we, we do. We have to kill ourselves psychologically in the process of, of, of the drama. But it says there, and how you cannot bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them, which say that are apostles and are not. But you found in them that they are liars. Who are the apostles? Who are the real Christians, the anointed ones? Are those that are in chastity? Are those that are controlling the sexual center? If someone says there is an apostle, there is a, a, a Christian, but is fornicating, is not controlling the sexual center, is abusing of the five center, is a liar. He is a fornicator. And remember here that fornication is when you misuse the sexual energy. It's not like people think that Fornication is the sexual act before being marriage. We, we, we talk about here about sexual abuse. Anyone that abuses the intellectual center, the emotional center, the motor center, the instinctual center is a sexual abuser. 
And then it's fornicating. That's to fornicate, is to use the sexual energy in the wrong way. And of course, the obvious way is when that sexual energy not only is being misused in the other centers, but also in the sexual center. When that energy escapes or is spilled in the so-called orgasm or spasm, which is only an action belong, uh, uh, that belongs to the animals. So anyone that abuses his sexual energy in any of these five centers is a liar if he says that he's a Christian, that he's an apostle. And that's why after that says that in this church of Ephesus you find those deeds of the Nicolaitans which I also hate. And the Atonus do not like or does not like the actions of the Nicolaitans. And you says what is a Nicolaitan? Well, the word Nicolaitan means or comes from the Greek word uh, Nico, which is a victor, a conqueror. Enlightened, which means people. From the same roots we find, for instance, nicotine. It means that the smoke is your conqueror, the one that controls you. The Nico is the conqueror, the victor of, of the smoke. So anybody that smokes cigarettes or any type of thing that produces smokes, that is, of course, his master. He's a slave of that. So Nico, Nicolaitan means that they follow the wrong doctrine. The Nicolaitans, of course, are the ones that somehow know that the sexual energy is important, but they don't know how to do it. And then they follow the wrong way. Celibacy, for instance, is a work or a doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Jesus of Nazareth, never taught celibacy. Precisely in that verse that we were reading about the anointment was a woman doing that. And that anointment of Jesus with that woman is a, a symbol of sexual transmutation. And only a true priest is the one that has a priestess. And that is the one that can perform the public mass in order to bring the force into the symbol of the wine and the bread, which is the Eucharist. Because the mass or the ritual performed when the wine and the bread is in, being distributed as the blood and the bread of Christ is a symbol of the true work that man and woman has to perform in the sexual act. If we receive the chrism through the sexual act of the anointment of Mary in the feet of Jesus, obviously we want to receive that anointment through the ritual of mass or any ritual of any religion. We need the two presence there, the woman and the man, the priest and the priestess. If there is only a priest, it's wrong. But in order to create life, the chrism needs the two forces of the sexual center. And in order to bring this force into any mass, any ritual, there is also neither representation of the male which represents the positive aspect of the Holy Spirit and the woman that represents the feminine aspect of the Holy Spirit. The priest and the priestess. That's a right and perfect ritual in order to help the souls to receive the chrism or the force of the Eucharist in order for those souls to receive the strength into their heart. Because this is how precisely other way in which 
the chrism, the solar force, helps in order for us to receive a strength in the work that we are performing inside. But the real work, of course, is what is called uh, Tantra Yoga, or the sexual transmutation. And this is how the development of the inner human starts. Because this Hume, as we said in many lectures before, the word Hume means spirit, breath, air, a blow of air. Of course, this Hume, which is our own particular monad, is also related with the spirit, with that energy that rises in the spinal column, that comes from the sexual matter. And the manas is the mind, the man that needs to receive that Hume in order to become human. And that is, of course, a process. That's why. If you want to perform this work and you forget yourself, or better say, you forget your true self, then the interior or superior centers are not in activity. And it's precisely through those two superior centers how the monad helps the psyche in order to control the five inferior centers which are a mess in each one of us. Any type of work, any type of practice, any type of mantra that awakes the chakra of the heart, any sahasrara, the crown chakra, precisely the best work that we can perform in order to receive assistance from our inner uh, being and the assistance of sup the superior beings that work for that. But remember that that is uh, psychological work, atomic work. That's why it is indispensable to go inside of us and to meditate as we said in other lectures, we need to awake the consciousness inside to control ourselves, to awake, to become a Buddha in order to perform this work. During the process of development of the emotional superior center and intellectual superior center, we receive visions, and this is precisely what uh, all the Gnostics love. The visions, the guidance of our inner being in the internal worlds. Because we know that, according to Dream Yoga, we have five inferior type of dreams related with the sick living that we have in the five centers. And that's why we have to study our five inferior type of dreams related with the five inferior centers in order to know what type of uh, traumas, taras, do we have inside. And to understand and comprehend the messages that we receive when we start developing these two superior centers. Because we need a guidance. And that's why the Master Samael Umver tell us that we are not alone. A problem is when those superior values or atomic intelligence of the monad are extracted. And then we are abandoned. Because that can happen. You hear, for instance, about empty houses. And you said, what is an empty house? 
So it's a house that is no longer connected with the inner being, a physical body of person that is no longer connected with the inner being. That means that the atomic intelligences that can help that person in order to develop internally are gone. The monad extracted them already because the monad considered that that psyche is already so degenerated that it's just a waste of time to try to save it. You talk with this person physically, you tell them the doctrine, and the person doesn't feel anything on the stance, but doesn't want to follow it. Because the inner monad no longer is connected. It's an empty house. Of course, has his psyche, his defects and vices like any one of us. But there are a lot of people like that, that the monad already said, this is a lost case. I will wait to the next cycle in order to continue and to do what I have to do. But I want to extract my atomic intelligence because it's a waste of time here. And I don't want to acquire more karma with this personality. But of course, if we feel inside the impulse in order to do the work, it's because still those atomic intelligences are there. That is, are pushing us, guiding us. Unfortunately, for our disgrace, we have a legion of atomic, demonic, negative intelligences inside our psyche as well. That we call lust, anger, pride, laziness, gluttony, etc., etc. Those are the legions that we have to work against and are inside of us. It's a great work. That's why it is called the great work. And unfortunately, those elements are free always when we are out of the body. And that's why we have all these uh, dreams. But also the being is acting and guiding us to these two superior centers in order for us to walk and tell us, hey, you have to work with this ego related with this center that is causing problems with your development. Or do this, do that, warning you during the path. You see, it's coming into my mind now, something that I was talking before about the atom nous, the chrism. He said, I am the way. Do you understand that? That chrism, solar four, the atom nous, is the intelligence. And that intelligence is the way. It's not thinking like other people think, oh, if I believe in Jesus that came 2,000 years ago, I'm done. Because he is the way. I believe in him, so I'm going to go directly to heaven. That's wrong. The chrism, that spiritual fire with, that we have to work with, is the way. But that way develops according to our own particular individual karma. Because that way, that chrism has to develop. You see, the way, the path of salvation, is not written, is not made any, in, any, in any place. It's, you have to do it. Because that chrism is the way. That the way that has to develop in you. So that chrism develops in each one of us in different ways according to our own particular karma, because that chrism is the one, that intelligence that deals with our problems in order to comprehend, in order to eradicate that from us. It's a work of fire. And that's why we said, it's the way. But in his way, you know very well that he finds a lot of hypocritical Pharisees, hypocritical scribes, Sadducees, a lot of people that are against him, and that is inside. It's not outside. Of course, you find also outside. But the problem is not outside. The problem is inside. Many egos that put doubts in your mind, 
that wants to take you out of the path and that tells you many things against your work that you are performing. And even in your dreams, as I said, sometimes you receive a vision, a guidance from your two superior centers. And your monad is guiding you and is giving you but in symbols. And that's precisely here the big problem of Gnostics. Because the language of the monad is symbolic. It has its own language. Because it's a language related with the universe. Related with the superior dimensions. Many Gnostics say, why doesn't my monad talk to me in English and tell me this directly? And the answer is because your monad wants to create a stupid guy. Right? He wants to develop an intelligent guy that will understand the language of the universe. He wants to make a man into the image of the universe. But to speak English, we already speak English. What in the heck is she going to speak English to us? So he's forcing us to meditate, to comprehend the language of the universe. So then we understand because the universe is multidimensional. And God is synthetic, gives everything in synthesis. But not only in this physical world. And, he, and God wants to create, I, I repeat, a, 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 an image of him, the inner human. And that's why it said that the inner human is the microcosmos of the macrocosmos. So in order to learn that, you have to learn the language. It's the, the intelligent language that teaches you. And that's why you receive those visions, symbols in symbols and you have to learn you have to have patience to meditate and to learn that language that's why in dream yoga you find a way how to develop that it's not going to be developed in one week or in two, one month let's say for instance that you want to speak Chinese can you speak Chinese in one week or in one month can you speak Chinese in one year I mean you can do the effort you know, but Chinese is a language really very difficult to learn, like many other languages. It takes time to learn another language. But we are talking here about the language of God. You see, the language of your inner monad, which is universal. It's not related to the planet Earth. It's related to the solar system, related to the galaxy, related to the infinite, related to all the beings that exist. And you have to learn that. That's the development of the human being inside of you. And the two superior centers help you to do that. But I repeat, unfortunately, we have a bad translator. And we, we have a vision. We, we have a guidance for our inner being. Immediately, of course, we want the easy way. And I want to talk to you. Can you listen to me, please? I have this dream. What do you think this dream symbolizes? I mean, you want answer from another guy that has in another level that maybe the answer will give you will be the symbol of his own level that is not related with your level. It might help a little bit. But your God is not giving you those guidances inside in order to guide your neighbor. He wants to guide you. So that belongs to you. But of course, sometimes those symbols are very difficult to interpret. And that's why you need to meditate, to analyze, to comprehend the voice, the language of God inside of you. Because this is the way in order to develop, to awake the intelligence, to become intuitive. And that's why the Master Samael on Veor always insist in meditation. But sometimes, visions that you have, and this is very careful, you have to understand this because it's very important. Sometimes, you can interpret the messages of your God with your ego. When I said 
that the two superior centers are not related with the ego, I spoke the truth. To this two superior center, the ego cannot deal with. But if you receive a guidance for the two superior centers and you start interpreting them, and then that's the problem because your ego is inside of you and can tell you, oh, that vision means that you are a great master already. That vision is telling you that you are a great initiate and that you reach this and this and that. And then you create that that we call mythomany. Mythomany, a mania, a habit of lying to yourself. Or a habit of interpreting the visions in the wrong way. And if you open your mouth and tell the other people about your visions, and you think that that vision means this and means that, and you start guiding those people in, based on those visions that you are interpreting in the wrong way, you are making a mess of everything. And this is what precisely is happening in the universal Gnosticism. Everybody, without exception, when we enter into this path, we start developing the two superior centers and we start receiving visions and guidance from our own particular monad and moreover, from the masters of the internal world. And if we don't know how to interpret that and we don't know how to shut our mouth, immediately we create problems for ourselves and to others. And when we become liars. And that's precisely when is the, the doctrine is interpreted in the wrong way. The Kundalini gives you awakened consciousness. But if you interpret the message of the, of the doctrine in the wrong way, you start becoming a Nicolaitan. In this day and age, you find the Nicolaitans that thought that only by ab having sexual abstinence, that's the way. And of course, the Nicolaitans developed a great power that controls different sects of Christianity. And some of them, in this case, Catholicism teaches celibacy, which is wrong. That's not the way to develop the chrism. Unless you develop a certain level and then you can, can be single. When the human being is already created, then you can be celibate. But if a human being is not created, it's wrong to be celibate. That's what we call Brahmacharya. Solar Brahmacharya is good after the creation of the human being within. When you attain resurrection, you no longer need sex. It is written. In the resurrection, there is no need of sexual act. But if we are not resurrected, if we are still full with mass inside, if we have Simon the leper inside, how are we going to, to uh, reject the sexual act? It's absurd. We have to be anointed by using the sexual energy, by using the sexual center, in order to transform ourselves. Because that energy, that fire, is the one that transforms the psyche. Any celibate man or woman has to prepare him, herself, in order to marry and to work with the sexual energy. But to keep the whole life being celibate is wrong. Because then it is no transformation. We have the case, for instance, of uh, the Dalai Lama. Dalai Lama is celibate. But he is already a human being inside. He has, he has the right to work with solar brahmacharya. But the rest of monks work with lunar brahmacharya, which is wrong. Sexual abstinence without creating and transforming ourselves psychologically is wrong. So that's precisely the teachings of the Nicolaitans. And moreover, when the Nicolaitans as well teach about sexual magic with orgasm or with animal desire, which is also wrong. So the doctrine of the Nicolaitans are precisely based on the church of Ephesus. 
Because any master that came into this world from any religion came and started working and teaching the doctrine of, of chastity, but in the right way. And the Nicolaitans always comes and, and, and make a mess of it and distort the, the, the doctrine. And do not understand that Eve of the book of Genesis is related with the sexual organs of procreation, whether a man or a woman. And Adam is related with the head, with the brain, whether man or a woman. That's mo uh, one of the symbols that we have to comprehend and to understand in order to follow the path. Because the whole doctrine is reading there. So, one needs to have a lot of equilibrium when we walk in this path. And before talking about your internal experiences, analyze, and if you ask for an advice in order to comprehend something that you receive that is a lot of symbolic, very difficult symbolic dream, ask for assistance, ask help. Believe what you read or what you hear, but also doubt about it. Hmm? That's the way. If you believe what you are receiving, the advice you're receiving is good, but also if you don't doubt about it, you, it's wrong. Doubt about it, I will. And analyze yourself. What this person is telling me, it might be right or might be wrong. It look, it look logical to me. Let's see. And analyze. Because it's related, any vision is related with your life. It's related with your inner, particular, individual development. Because the chrism is the way. But every way is different in each person. And this is how we receive. Because during, during the work with the five centers, obviously we are working with the development of the human inner human being. And it is a long work. Starts, of course, with equilibrating the three brains. But then continue with the creation of the human being, the astral body, the mental body, the causal body, and continues in the internal planes developing that human being to the image of God and continues and continues until creating really a Paramartha Satya. So the path is long and it's inside. But remember that that holy chrism is the way, the light and the life. Do you have questions? Um, through alchemy, creating the astral body, uh, and what I'm working on ego, is it possible? To create the astral body when we are working in the ego? No, no. Creating the astral body through alchemy, but not working on the ego. In order to create the astral body, what you, what you need is equilibrium. Because the energy that creates the astral body is the hydrogen T12. But that hydrogen T12 has to be saved. You don't have to use it for your intellectual center or emotional or instinctual or motor or whatever. Right? You have to have an equilibrium, an equilibrated life. In order when, when you go and, and practice the sexual magic, then of course you create your astral body. But in that equilibrium, obviously you have to fight against your defects. It's not possible, it says you, not to annihilate any ego. And in that, of course, it's a struggle in order not to feed your ego. And in order not to feed your ego, then your egos are dying. Because the main dish for the ego is fornication. Do you realize that? It's impossible to create an astral body if you fornicate. 
and, if, and you fornicate through the mind, through the motor center, through the emotional center, through the instinctual center, and through the sexual center. So that's why we need an equilibrium. And that equilibrium, of course, is acquired little by little, bit by bit. It's not that in one week, in one month, you will be, we will be completely equilibrated. But the different levels of astral body or just astral body? What do I mean different levels? I mean, the more ego you, you uh, rid yourself of, right? You get a higher level of an astral body or just well, it comes all at one time. Okay, here's your astral body. No, no, the astral body has to be created, developed inside. And that's a process of the transmutation of the sperm and the ovum in sexual connection. In, in, in which you are saving the sexual energy and learning to create inside of your body another body. It's the same, the same element that you need to create a physical body, which is the sperm and the ovum, are the same elements that you need in order to create the astral body, but the procedure is different. You need to transmute, you need to save that. And that's a process of alchemy that is explained in different books of the Master. And of course, the quality of the astral body is related with the quality of your sexual seed. And of course, in the astral body, you have the inheritance of your inner being, type of wisdom that develops there. Which helps you, of course, because within the astral body also you have to build a mental solar body in order for the intellectual superior center to act also there. And beyond that, you need a causal body, which is the body of willpower. But the astral body, of course, is the first one, which is a mediator between your monad and your psyche in the physical body. That's why we said, I believe in the sun, the cosmic crestus, the powerful astral mediator that unites our physical personality with the supreme immanence of the solar father. The development of that, of course, starts when we put in activity the chakra of the heart and when we start being guided by the atom nous, the son of man in the heart. To have the son of man inside, of course, is to have an astral body. And then we receive guidance. But uh, every astral body uh, is developed in different ways or has different wisdom related with the level of being in which we are. The doctrine of what? Manipulation. Manipulation. Why they don't do it? Why do they teach that doctrine? Well, Buddhism is different. You have to understand that uh, uh, the Lamas are not Christians. The Lamas learn how to transmute the sexual energy. In, uh, here in Gnosticism, we teach pranayamas. For the Lamas, this is something very common. They know how to handle the sexual energy. The problem with Christianity or Catholicism is that they are sexual uh, practicing abs abstinence, celibacy, but they don't control the sexual energy. And they are not working with the five centers. While in Buddhism, they know about that. They know about the uh, control of the five centers. They know about the su two superior centers and they of course work only with celibacy. Of course we have to understand uh, that there's steps and steps. Some of those monks when they reach certain level they receive the doctrine of the Tantra Yana or the Tantra Yoga in which they have to create the internal bodies. Most of the monks that are now in Buddhism, they are only working with the equilibrated, uh, the way of the equilibrated man, the fourth way. 
in which they are equilibrate their, their five centers and, uh, and awake their consciousness as a single monks. But there is just a, a limit for that. In order to go further, they have to find uh, the feminine aspect. But the Nicolaitans really are the ones that think that only by sexual abstinence, celibacy, without working in your psyche, just by believing in something, just by belief, is enough. And that's, of course, a big lie. Because you cannot acquire anything just by believing. Another question is, is there any particular place within where we store the energy we are gathering that we want to save? A place? Well, there are different chakras. Place where we uh, save the energy. Of course, in the solar plex, it's a great deposit of energy. And the chakras are precisely the places or the churches that the Book of Revelation talks about where we deposit that. The thing is that when we are starting transmutation, sexual transmutation, the cells of the physical body are receiving that. When the physical cells of the physical body are completely saturated with that sexual transmutation, and then they started to saturate, the surplus of that start to saturate the vital depth of the physical body, which in this case is the ethereal body. When that ethereal or vital body is completely saturated with that sexual transmutation, and then the surplus of that energy start the creation of the superior emotional body, which is the astral body. You see different octaves in which we have to transform the energy. Of course, the energy is being saved and, and placed in our organism. In all the cells, in all the atoms. It's an, an atomic transformation that we are performing. The chrism, the sexual force, the anointment, is for every single atom of our physical body. Every single atom of our vital body. In order for the eventual creation of the astral body to be performed. So, it's there. And that's why the sexual force of the Holy Spirit starts fixing the different problems, different sicknesses, psychosomatic things that we have in each one of us in order to eventually create the astral body. Another question, what is a good practice to develop intuition? The master gives the mantra, Om Mani Padme Yom, which is the best mantra in order to develop. And of course, he said that it's pronounced Om Masi Padme Yom. Uh, that mantra is the best. Because he's saying, it's putting it in contact directly with your inner monad. Oh, my inner monad within me. Oh, my father within me. Oh, my God within me. That means. Of course, that mantra can be explained different ways because it's very profound, but it's related with the chakra of the heart. And uh, or just by vocalizing the vowel O also helps the development of the chakra of the heart. The beginning of the initiation, that's why the Master says in the book of Revolution of Beelzebub, the beginning of the initiation is the development of the intuition, the superior emotional center. Because this is how the monad guides us. And also the pineal gland, which is the superior intellectual center. What can you tell us about the poisonous, the vibrations developed by people in celibacy without transmutation? Oh, the, the poison, the, this is called the uh, uh, Gurdjieff, call it this the Poisoninos Kyrians vibrations, which are created by those people that only uh, have sexual abstinence, but they don't transmute. Neither for, for pranayama, just, just, just sexual abstinence. Of course, when the sperm 
or the ovum in this case is just being uh, hold and not transmuted. And then the, the human organism transform that in an instinctive way. And uh, uh, when that happens, it starts to uh, irradiate poisonous Kirian's vibrations. Those poisonous Kirian vibrations, poisonous Kirian, you see, it's very difficult, right? Poisonous, poisonous Kirian. That creates, of course, uh, strong fanaticism, uh, strong, how you call, uh, uh, how do you call that person that are uh, soul sufficiency? Yeah. Phariseism, in which people think that by killing another person, they are doing a work to God. And that's developed in, in many religions. Christianity, for instance, remember uh, the Holy Inquisition, when the monks were killing people in the fire and thinking that they were serving God with that. That's because the poisonous, poisonous Kirian vibrations were developing in their mind, in their psyche, a type of Tara. Of course, is a very, very dangerous ego. In this day and age, of course, those monks no longer uh, create uh, uh, or burn people, and, but they are, of course, abusing, sexually speaking, because they don't know how to control the sexual energy. So the clue is to learn how to control the sexual energy wisely. And in order to annihilate the psychological defects that we have within, especially lust, in order to avoid fornication in any of the five centers for the eventual creation of the astral body to happen. Another question? Regarding the quality of the astral body created, being related with the sexual seed, how does the quality of the astral body develop after creating it? by annihilating desire because you can have an astral body but if you have still ego and the seed of ego within that means that your ego can even act to that astral body and that's precisely the problem and that's why Judas has to be annihilated that's why the drama you see in which you have to be killed on the cross because the chrism, Christ, is that internal astral body within which we have the mental body, the causal body, that unfortunately is surrounded by criminals, thieves, unbelievers, fornicators, assassins, and all of that is within. So, in order to annihilate that, in order to purify and to create the Tosoma Helia Kong, the solar body or the golden body, they call the Merkaba, the chariot in which God can ride. But for that, we, you have to uh, perform the Maha Bharata, the great war. And guided by, by the chrism, by the atom nus, which is Krishna. Guiding, of course, Arjuna inside of you. You see, this drama is not only written in the, in the Gospels of Christianity, it's written everywhere. You have another question? Are you creating, uh, are you creating astral body? Are you creating other bodies simultaneously, like the causal body? Since it's willpower, and you need willpower, obviously, for, for alchemy, right? I mean, you need a lot of willpower, I would think, to, you know, to create a, the astral body. So are you already creating your causal body the same no, time? Ev no, everything is a process. <clears throat> Seven days of creation. Remember that Moses gave a guidance, and it's called Bereshit, that people call the book of Genesis in which he explains the creation of those bodies and steps. 
Hmm? But in simple answer, we will say, every step, God said. Hmm? So it's not ours, as I said, that we have to create it. It's the monad, through the atom news, to the intelligence of our near being that is being done inside. That's why it's written, and God said. Hmm? Because that God is within. When that it says, God said, there, let there be light. He's saying it because he's doing it with us. We are remembering him. We are observing ourselves. And then we observe the ego. And then God said, let there be light. And then we go, meditate, annihilate, and there is light. So that there, there be light is the beginning. But it takes there, there be light like millions of times, let there be lights. Because we have a lot of egos. And with each ego is the light hidden. So you annihilate, there will be light, there will be light, there will be light. And eventually, in the third day, you create your astral body. The dry land appears. But for the mind to appear, you need a fourth day. This is initiation, steps. It's not like you are going to develop in one shot everything. No. Let's see, for instance, the creation of the physical body. The beginning of the creation of the physical body is a sperm in the ovum uniting the sexual act. And after that, Mary takes the whole job there. You see that? In this case, the man who represents Adam says, okay, I want a son. But Mary takes the whole work. Nine months. And after those nine months, the child comes out. And then after, it starts growing because it needs to be fed. The same is the astral body. After it's being created, you need to feed it in order for the astral body to grow. Because the child of God, or the, or the child God, starts being a baby, coming from the womb of our own particular Mary, which is your sexual organs. And then it's growing, growing, because you are feeding it. How do you feed it? With the hydrogen 24. Because the hydrogen that feeds the physical body is the hydrogen 48. But in order to feed the astral body, we need the hydrogen 24. And you need to transmute. You need to save a lot of energy. Mainly emotional energy. You have to annihilate a lot of negative emotions in order for that astral body to be fed and to grow and to become illuminated, full of glory. Comprende? Um, what's the difference with somebody with astral body and somebody through meditation experience astral, you know, experiences an astral plane, right? Does a person with an astral body have some kind of bigger benefit when he goes into an astral plane in terms of experiences and understanding? You know, what does the astral body do for you in the astral plane itself? Well, uh, it gives you, obviously, uh, it's like uh, you said, for instance, here in the physical plane. Let's see. What does a bike do for you in a Mercedes Benz? A Mercedes Benz can take you to different places to other states of the United States or to any places in Europe or whatever. But uh, with a bike, you can, well, you can do it as well, but it takes a lot of time. The thing is that the astral solar body is a vehicle that can take you to any place in the universe. It's a vehicle that can take you there. While with a molecular lunar body of desire, which is called Kamarupa, you can also travel and go into the astral plane and to have uh, conscious experiences, but are completely different than the one that you can have with the astral body. No, comprehension-wise, would, would there be a different... I understand travel-wise, yes, it'd be faster or whatever. But comprehension-wise, would you have a better understanding of... Well, you know, obviously, because with an astral body, you have senses. As in, in this case, in the physical body, you have your five senses. And through the, through the five senses, you capture the physical world. Obviously, with the astral body, you have the senses... And you are more in contact with the astral plane. You are a citizen. 
you have an individual body. Well, with the other, you sense it a little bit, but not that much. Like this is the case, for instance, that we were talking in another lecture about the case in the Lemurian epoch, when they were developing the physical body. The cyclops were only seeing the internal bodies, very clear, but not the physical body. That's why they were called cyclops. But little by little, with the development of the physical eyes, they were seeing the physical plane. As now, we are fully developing this physical plane, and we see the physical plane easily. But in ancient times, we were not seeing the, as, uh, the physical plane as we are seeing it right now. So in, this, in the same way, when you go in the astral plane with your molecular body, you more or less can see something but very vague. But with the astral body, you have the senses completely developed, and then you see everything completely. That's why we need bodies in every dimension in order to capture that dimension, in order to have evidence of that. Capish? Another question? Another question. Can you transmute the energy of the other centers or only the sexual center? An example is classical music helping the emotional center, reading the Bible, intellectual exercise, promotion, etc. Well, uh, we have to know how to save, of course, the energies of the five centers. But the only energy that we can transmute in order to create is the sexual energy. Because it's the only energy that creates. The other centers have their energy in order to act, you know, physically. Because you need energy in order to use your intellect, energy in order to use your emotion in this physical plane, energy in order to use your instinct in this physical plane. But the only energy that can take uh, uh, and enter in, into multidimensional planes is the sexual energy. Is the energy of the Holy Spirit. So it's only because we are creating, you see, we are creating that every day with what we eat, breathe, and think. That's the synthesis of all the forces that go into the hydrogen T12. Should I review how I use my centers and look to see how I can become more equilibrated? Review the five centers. In which way to review? I mean, to examine? To examine, of course. This is precisely what this is called memory work. Every day, we have to observe also the three brains. Every day. To see what changes are we, or are we the same ones? Because we, we want to see if there's changes. And only by observing ourselves and, and having a review of that is how we uh, discover that. After many years, for instance, you can sit down in your chair and to inquire about uh, your psychological behavior uh, when you were non Gnostic. And now your psychological behavior being an Gnostic is some different? Are you behaving in a different way? Or are you still just behaving in the same way and just having the theory of Gnosis in your head? Hmm. Of course, review is important. I work a lot with my brain every day in my job. How can I become more balanced in my job? That's a big problem. You know, not only for you, but for everybody. Because unfortunately, this society is based in the intellect. And a lot of people always overwork the intellect. The, thing, uh, the, the main thing that we have to do is that when you are getting tired of your intellectual center, you start working with your emotional center mm -hmm. in order to, to equilibrate, right? the intellectual center and also by working with the motor center problem is that when you are for instance the 20 uh, let's say eight hours 
on top of, of, of a computer and working your, your mind, right, all the time. You can have, for instance, headphones to music and to act with your emotional center and not to identify because the problem here is the identification with the centers. Remember that we are the ones that are using it. If we feel tired using the intellectual center, go into the emotional center. Listen to classical music. Or start uh, making jokes with your friends in order to act the emotional center, you know, not to become so dull. Stand and dance. Or walk. We come back again. Because it's the equilibrium of the three brains that how, how, how you precisely don't keep working with you are feeling all tired because then you are stealing sexual energy. That's a problem. Do you have any other question? Is it? With the pineal gland being atrophied along with other organs, will transmutation fully develop all parts of the physical body or is alchemy needed as in the superior bodies? Now, obviously, uh, the pineal gland is also uh, regenerated with a sexual transmutation and also uh, regenerated in the vital part of it because really uh, our pineal gland is atrophied due to the fact that we don't use it. I think it's a question between working as a single person and as a couple. Is the transmutation and restoration of the physical body the same? Well, of course, it's a big difference. If you are single at being married, the type of energy that you transmute or is, is different. But there is always, of course, a transformation. Your pineal gland receives a powerful uh, activity with the transmutation of your sexual force as a single person. But obviously, when you are married, you are mixing the forces, not only of, of your wife or your husband, but the third force. Because during the sexual act, the two fires, men and women, are acting. And the forces of nature are also entering through those channels. And obviously, the, 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 the charge of energy that we receive when we are doing sexual transmutation cannot be compared. But when we're doing single transmutation. But, of course, we receive a lot of charge of force in the pina gland with pranayama. A lot. So is it true that uh, some people have created astral bodies in their previous lives and don't need to recreate them? Oh yeah, of course. These are called falling bodhisattvas. There were many initiates that created the astral, mental, solar bodies, I mean causal bodies, inside. They already have them. But they uh, fornicated, they fell, and then now they just need to recuperate the light in each one of them. So they have to practice alchemy? Oh, yeah. Oh, they have to, uh, it's always. In order to recuperate, they need sexual alchemy, the fire, the, the serpents. But uh, this type of individuals, if they practice only the annihilation of the ego, it's good also, because they already have the solar bodies. But in order to activate them, they need sexual magic. So this is it. Uh, when, when we transmute, we take the energy up to the spinal column. So it's taking the sexual energy up into the, the, the brain, which can't handle the sexual uh, um, energy because it's too um, high energy. I don't understand the question. What is it? You know how you said that, that, that the brain can't really take the sexual energy because it's too high octane? Yeah. But isn't that what, what we're doing when we're taking it up the spinal column? Well, that's different. We are transmuting. You see? Transmuting means to transform. To transform the matter into energy. And this is precisely how. 
Obviously, we need the sexual force to act in the superior intellectual center, in all the centers. But why transmutation? Hmm? Doesn't mean that they had to go exactly as it is. Right? If it's, of course, the T12 as it is in the sexual organs, that's the problem. But if you transmute it, and then, of course, you are, you are charging your superior centers. But you are creating another thing. It's not the same. Wait, when you say transmute, is there like a specific like thing you have to do to transmute it between the bottom and the top of the spinal column or something? Transmutation means to transform one thing into another. Obviously, the solar chrism, the Christ, the fire, the solar force, is within the sperm. You need to liberate that fire, which is created. And then that fire rises in the spinal column. Druida and Pingala. And that, of course, passes in different transformations because it's related to all dimensions. Is circular breathing considered a type of pranayama? Circular breathing. First time, what is that? Circular breathing. Well, yeah, you can use that. Any type of breathing is good for transmutation if you are concentrated in the transmutation. If you are imagining the transmutation, because everything has to be consciously do. Hmm? Remember that is nous, the atom in the left ventricle of the heart, the one that guides the transmutation of the sexual force. That's why the atom knows the son of man has got to Bethany, go down to the house of the, of the dates, and then to find the feminine aspect, which is Mary, in order to receive the anointment. You got to understand that. Christ is in the heart, but he needs indispensably to go into Bethany, the sexual center, to be anointed for the work. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Amen.